Mr. Chairman, thank you for my indulgence. Let me go through my list. I appreciate it. Senator Blewett is next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question for the gentleman who claims to have been on the federal marijuana plan that traveled here from Florida. Is he in, Mr. Chairman, in, I'm going to give you two minutes. Okay. I want to hear about the program, but can you just limit it to two minutes? Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Again, it was called a Compassionate Care Investigational New Pro Drug Program. It started in 1978. Robert Randall was the first patient. I became the second patient in 1982. We got up to 13 patients in 1992. We then got an open protocol for AIDS patients. They bombarded George Bush Sr. with thousands of protocols. George Bush Sr., not wanting to look soft on drugs running against Clinton, somehow arbitrarily shut the federal program down, grandfathering the 13 of us in. Most of those were AIDS patients and they didn't have the AIDS cocktails they did in 92, and um, they do today, and so they died. That's why there are four patients left. Now, I have been receiving it for 28 years. There's, I'm a, a director of an organization called Patients Out of Time. We're the only organization in the United States that is sanctioned by the AMA, the American Medical Association, to teach doctors about medical cannabis. The same is true with the ANA. And now, what I'm, I have a problem with is with your law as far as there's lots of holes in it. There's lots of, first of all, you're given the right for doctors to, to recommend medical cannabis, but they have no education. They didn't learn about it in medical school. Okay, how are you doing that? What I recommend is that any, recommend, any person recommends, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a, a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant, that they have to be approved for medical cannabis, uh, from uh, a continuing education credit, approved by the AMA and the ANA. And the same thing if you have caregivers who's ever actually giving the medicine to the patient, okay? That's a pharmacist. That's what that guy is. He's a pharmacist. Therefore, he has to have the education too. So he should not be allowed to do that unless he's got the same education that a doctor does. And it's available online 24 hours a day through Patients Out of Time, medicalcannabis.com, and through University of California at San Francisco. So you see, I'm just here to try to say it's a real medicine, okay? I haven't had to take narcotics or other drugs. I'm a stockbroker in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay, I teach disabled sailing. I teach ch children and adults how to sail boats in Coconut Grove in Miami called, with an organization called Shake a Lake. I lead a very productive life because I use 10 to 12 cannabis cigarettes a day. Now, I get no euphoric effect. A lot of people talk about how the cannabis that the government grows isn't that strong in THC. Well, guess what? THC isn't what patients are looking for. They're looking for CBD. CBD does not get you high at all. Okay, but it works medically. So the, the problem is, is, is y'all don't understand that cannabis is, is a medicine that is, is just, bled, have, people have no idea the different cannabinoids and how they work. We're just learning, science is just learning about all this. The cannabinoid receptors, we all have throughout our body, millions and millions of them. Now, I don't get a euphoric effect because the scientists have, have decided that my cannabinoid receptors are defective. I'm getting the medical benefit, but I'm not getting the, the euphoria. Therefore, I can drive, I can do whatever I have to do. So all I'm saying is you need to put teeth in rewriting this, not, re not repealing, but rewriting this. You need to have it that whoever is overseeing it, that the medical board has strength, okay, that if a doctor does something wrong, just like if they gave 40 prescriptions in an hour of OxyContin, I would hope the medical board would question that doctor's credentials. Okay, well, the same thing with medical cannabis. It's a medicine, okay? And then next, give teeth to the police department. Okay, if somebody's growing marijuana and shipping it out of the state, bust them. Okay? Bust them. Give them, give them something to do that they can do their job. Okay? But the whole point is we have real patients. Okay? We have real patients and that are going to suffer. And, you know, you talk about kids. Now, I, my nephews and nieces all grew up with me using marijuana. Today they've got their own kids. They're doctors and lawyers themselves. Okay? When I went to Florida, when I moved to Florida because of my bone disorder, warm, warm climate, all the neighborhood little kids, eight and nine-year-old, whatever, they were all in D.A.R.E. program. They were this. They were that. You know, again, cigarettes. But that was Urban's medicine. They could distinguish between the two. I spoke at a conference one time, and the head of the PTA came up to me and says, Urban, I have one question for you. What do you tell the kids? I said, very simple. You tell the kids from an early age it's a medicine, just like any other medicine. And God forbid a doctor says you need it, a qualified physician says you need it, then that's what it's for, just like any other medicine. That's the whole point. This is a medicine. Scientists are finally realizing that it's a unique medicine. You know, if some scientist or some explorer came out of the Amazon with this new drug, he'd be hailed as one of the greatest uh, you know, uh, discoveries of ever. The problem is the baggage. This, this drug was legal in this country from 1860 to 1937. It was manufactured by Merck, Eli Lilly. Okay, it was used for a myriad of disorders, okay, including prevalent for muscle relaxant and anti-inflammatory for pain. That's what it does for me. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, so I, I appreciate wrap it up. I appreciate the, okay, I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. It was important enough for me to come out here all the way from Fort Lauderdale to be able to at least have these few minutes to try to educate, okay, because that's the whole point that I've been trying to do since 1982. 
Now, I've helped 14, 15 states pass laws. I'm working federally for reclassification. I've, I've, I've done every committee hearing as far as with, uh, through DEA in 86 to 88. I've done all these things. I've educated. Well, I've still got time. to. Uh, still more education needs to be done, and that's why I'm here today. Thank you.